We are giving you the best on Afro Vibes Radio. We are 24-7, so don't change that dial. Just leave it on. Looking to advertise your event or maybe your business? Contact Total Medulla at TotalMedulla.com. Hi guys and welcome back. Um, so we had to cut a couple of things short this week because today's group discussion is going to be very long. We're talking about black churches today. So <laughs> dun, uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. yeah. So I mean, and this kind of got sparked from the last episode. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, what we talked about in, in episode ten, but uh, we, we mentioned black churches a little bit in that conversation. And today we really want to kind of go into depth with it. So uh, I first want to start off with just each one of you guys' experiences with black churches and, and, and kind of, uh, I guess, give us a little history and the background of, of kind of where you're coming from. So, Stephen, let's start with you. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, it's Stephen Hawkins. You know me. Um, I grew up in a, uh, and if you've listened to the show before, I uh, grew up in a uh, very strict Christian home. Um, I'm still a Christian. You know, I haven't, I haven't run away just yet. Um, (laughs) but yes, um, my dad is a pastor at the church I'm from back in, uh, good old East Texas. And, uh, so I have seen quite a bit of, uh, some of the more interesting things that we're, they're going to probably bring up in today's topic. Um, you know, I could probably bring a very interesting perspective of somebody, you know, from the inside. You know, the inside of a pastor's home and how that actually kind of like functions and what exactly is the limitations and the, uh, you know, the benefits of that. Hey, Chris, this is your first time actually on the show. So kind of introduce yourself. How you doing, man? Um, I am Christopher Mukes uh, here from Houston, Texas, and I grew up in a Baptist church. And um, I woke up probably about four or five, about five years ago, you know, just sitting in church one Sunday and I heard the same sermon that I'd heard the year before, you know, and it's just like, well, you know, what does this really mean? I keep hearing the same thing. It was Easter Sunday. Like, why do we keep hearing, hearing the same story over and over? You know, what if, you know, so I just, I sat there and I just started reading through my, um, my Bible and I came across this scripture, uh, Matthew 7 and 7. Uh, asking it is given, seek you shall find, knocking the door be open to you. So I just, start, I just, asked for more um, wisdom and knowledge and it just began to come to me man from all over the place and then I from that point just woke up you know like some bigger out here and it's not it's not actually out here or out there it's within us right so Bogo what about you Bogo you're actually back on the show today because I know (laughs) we've just kind of I mean, you've done your own thing with Trong, so you kind of left us behind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. What's up, everyone? <clears throat> it's good to be back. And I guess, so I'm, I've never specifically attended a black church. So I'm Nigerian, but I come to the perspective of Nigerian churches and its relation to the Nigerian community because I think it's very similar. And I guess the sort of the, the problem, I want to say the problems, but the lack of... Um, I guess outreach to the younger community is something that I've seen in both black churches and both Nigerian churches. But like Stephen, my father is a pastor. I have uh, lived inside a pastor's home. I was sort of a <laughs> 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 I was a pastor's kid, quote unquote per se. You know, I went to college, did lots of crazy things. I'm nowhere near as crazy as I used to be, but you know, and I. I've gone back to attending church on a, on a regular basis now, and it's done a lot of good for me. But I think this is a very important topic, you know, for me to talk about. So yeah. it's good to be back. Yeah, appreciate that, man. And, uh, you know, you guys are already familiar with my back history. Uh, I grew up in in a split home in a way, um, Islamic background, but half my family's Christian. And so I'm very familiar with both the Islam and the experiences there, as well as black churches. Because, again, you know, half my folks are or, um, Baptists and Methodists. So I first want to go into, I guess, this topic of the of this scenario, and that is, are black churches actually effective in the messages that, sh- messages that they're giving? Because um, with a lot of people who happen to leave the church, part of it is due to either a conversation they have with a preacher or somebody who is a mentor at that church or whatever establishment, and there's a disconnect between kind of what they see and what is being said 
So do you guys think that there's a disconnect there or is there just more to it? And it's open to the floor. I think it's a disconnect. I think that uh, there are a lot of a lot of people that leave the church. And I think there are a lot of people that are still there that, you know, deep down have doubt and want to leave, but don't know where to go to. You know, Um, what kind of doubt are we talking about here? Doubting that God is maybe real or you know, just the whole storyline of the Bible. Uh, I mean, it, it's different for, for every person, of course, but I think that um, most people are in church through fear, because of fear, you know. Um, and it's something that been, that's been handed down to each and every one of us, you know. I always ask a lot of people, like, why are you Christian? You know, and majority of people don't have a real answer to it. They just say, oh, because, you know, I I believe, you know, God is my Lord and Savior, or Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and he died on the cross. I mean, that's it. You know, but that's a conditioned answer, you know. Um, mm. So I think that a lot of people just are there out of fear, going to hell, you know. Is what's been downloaded. Do you think so that's part of it is, is, I guess, the perception that's been given as far as like either the preacher or whoever is kind of the main person in charge of those messages? Yeah, is that, is of course, that kind of because he's, menf- yeah, he's benefiting off of every person sitting in that church. You know, I okay. got to keep you, in, I have to keep you in here. You know, are you guys experiencing that as well, uh, Stephen Bogo? Well, here's, here's the thing. So, when it comes to like, um, so pastors getting a uh, cut of uh, like ties and all of other stuff and like, you know, all the perks of being like the leader of a flock and the prestige that goes along with it. I would be lying if I said that there wasn't a certain degree of, 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 of splendor that, that, that does come with it. It's, it's, it's. It's less financial, I believe, in the wide variety of uh, like rural churches, and more more along the lines of just how people view you. People listen to what you have to say when you are a pastor of a like of a church. It's it, it's considered like uh, in the black community and rural black community, it's considered almost as prestigious as being a doctor or or a lawyer or this or this or that or third. You're the religious leader mm-hmm. now. As far as like you know, do they get like little offerings and stuff like that? Yeah, you have little money and stuff like that. And the based on the service that they give to the church, because they often have other jobs along with this in a, in a lot of rural churches, they they do receive they do, they do receive some sort of financial compensation from traveling or visiting with people. And it's not designed to make them rich. It was never designed for that. However, some people have made quite a lot of money on on essentially what appears to be just peddling blessings or peddling good or positive words or or the right negative words or the right this the right that but that that it just kind of d- depends on what church you're at who's speaking that day and uh what type of flock is actually there that's a, that's a True. good point. I mean, yeah. I, and I really don't want to paint a broad picture in this conversation as far as like every black church is a certain way. Because to your point, Stephen, you know, so a lot of people aren't making a ton of money. It's just a, there's certain individuals who see a system in place and they're trying to figure out how can I enrich myself. And that's more of a personal issue than it is the actual religion itself. Like that's I, I look. I see that more as a, a one-to-one deal, where it's like that individual prob, a person has a problem, right? You know, um, yeah. and it's unfortunate that I guess my my issue with that is is the people who are in that congregation would need to step up in that instance and be like, hey, you're not doing this right, and either make a choice, either to leave that church and go to a, a better church, or demote that person and put someone else in place who would be responsible with that kind of power right what do you guys think about that yep very true yeah, yeah. i mean I, I i agree with you i mean it's, it's not every church yeah you know but uh but there are a lot of them like there, don't, there are a like, lot don't of get them. me twisted like, <laughs> like, like, no there i remember specifically like when i was um i'm very wary of people i like to affectionately refer to as uh 
and the Bible talks about them too, false prophets. Yeah. These guys that like come in to your church and they, you know, you know, they're there and they, you know, they boost attendance because they're there for one night only or three nights only or something like that during revivals and stuff like that. And, you know, they're, 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 you know, you know, they're bringing the fire, the brimstone, bringing the, the the message, and it almost feels like some people are only attending or 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 there because they feel guilty about something, maybe not being there all year, True, or, yeah. mm-hmm. or maybe not being as involved. It's, it's supposed to be a reinvigorating kind of kind of aspect to it, but in some places, this just becomes just kind of like a just like a cycle every year. the wheel. Exactly. Same mm-hmm. thing every Sunday. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And what do you guys think about? Um, let's let's kind of touch on the preacher a little bit. What do you guys think about how the preacher's, I guess, conveying his messages? Because in some instances, it almost seems like a parody. I mean, it, it is a very there's a strict cadence that you see. Like <coughs> usually, um, you start off with whatever the sermon topic is, mm-hmm. and then you go into a lesson from the Bible, you know, or uh, and kind of relate that lesson to something that people are going through in their real life. But there's always that moment towards the middle end of that sermon where it almost becomes an entertainment event where you they start putting one liners in and then the piano players playing in between yeah. each line. And, and for me, as a logical thinker, this distracts me because I'm like, yeah. we're not focused on what you're talking about now. We're now focused on just the excitement part. And of course, the old lady in the back saying, yeah. And like, it's just like, it's. It's almost it's a, a show. show at this point. It's a, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's one big show. Yeah. <laughs> pageantry. You know. Yes. The pageantry yeah. gets kind of. I actually used to play the drums. So. <laughs> oh, so you were one of the guys that kicked I, I, with the Hey, sleep. just letting you know. People were feeling scared. <laughs> I was uh, on the beat. Just letting you know. <laughs> So is that actually feeling the spirit or is this all just entertainment? Like what what is the purpose of that? Oh my goodness. I was reading a book about this kind of like thought process the other day. So there are some people that are different types of people view God in different ways. And and they some people are sensates. They they take in music, sounds, like like the feeling they get, like this general kind of like rush they get from being in a group of people being like, Amen, Amen, Amen. They 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 feed off of that and it's very and it's important, you know, what the book warns about is that you could get so focused on the actual, like, show, like the fireworks and all this other stuff. And the preacher is like, yeah, you see me here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, in all seriousness, and you get so focused on that that you completely and utterly miss it. You get so focused on what the choir is singing versus what the words of the actual song that they're singing. And I think the pastors know that. I think the mm-hmm. leaders of the church know that understand that psychology behind it yes you know they do that's interesting do you think that's that's actually being effective though as far as like so okay so you're you're guard you're getting people's attention like yeah i mean your the focus is definitely on you but like to steven's point if the message is being missed because it's the sole focus is now on just how the message is, is presented you know isn't that kind of defeating the purpose if the message is simple no because if my message is 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 more on the simplistic side, be better to yourself, be yeah. better to those around you, and that's all I've really said the whole time, and I've just kind of like repeated that over and over and over and over and over again, then no. Like you just say, be better dun, 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 yeah. to those around you. Dun, 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 dun. You, you know, like, it, it, I'm just saying it's like the more simplistic the message is, and I'm not saying that simple messages are like the worst thing ever. It's just it's it's a lot easier to get across a very small, like, you know, message right there when you're having to do all this, like, other things. Because, yeah. you know, people have, you know, short attention spans. That's true. And, and, and you know, like, I'm gl- making a really loud noise. Everybody pays attention to you. And then, you know, slowly and steadily they kind of drift off, look at the phone. Yeah. <laughs> True. Bugle, you've been pretty quiet over there, man. What's up? <laughs> no, I think <clears throat> I think you guys raise up some points that uh illustrate some of the overall problems with Christianity in America. I think Ooh. not even the black community, but we can yeah. Here we that's, go. That's, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not No, I mean that's that's an entirely different topic. But I think it's interesting you say that because 
even as someone who speaks, when you're a speaker, you have to find a way to hone your delivery that you're reaching out to your audience. This is just general, whether you're talking about anything. And sometimes I think in the setting of a church where you're trying to preach the word of God, where the words of the scripture is very important for the members of the congregation, that's where it gets dangerous. But at the same time, you have that balance of if you, if you can't deliver it correctly, then no one's going to be able to pay attention to you. So I think a lot of preachers in general are kind of put in a tough spot. And I know this because I've actually uh, I've actually preached a sermon before. And Interesting. How did that experience it was, go? It was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I had to listen to you. No, no, it was hard because, I mean, and I was listening to some other preachers preparing. They're like, and God uh, said, let there be light. And I thought, you know, I'm going to sound ridiculous if I, <laughs> if I try. <laughs> so then, I mean, I went up there trying to you know trying to talk as if it's a conversation but i realized that that tactic wasn't very effective either so i mean it's it's tough i'm not i'm i'm not trying to play devil's advocate but i think that it from the standpoint of the preachers themselves it's they're trying to strike a balance between preaching the words of the scripture yet delivering in a way that people listen to them and unfortunately that it's off balance it's off balance to the point where like you said chris it's just it's just a show it's just entertainment you know it's just uh, no one's really listening to the words they're more get the like you said the the piano and the choir singing it and then yeah, you got people what, dancing on the side yeah, old I mean, ladies going crazy yeah like people yeah. people like make car- caricatures of black churches you know yes. <laughs> you know yes. this is this is what i think it is man i think that if pastors would really <clears throat> dig in and give her uh, give a deeper message than the letters that's just on the page because everybody's heard the story before every story you you preaching in church everybody's heard it before so that's why i think they have to throw a show around it to make this sermon which i just you know preached three sundays ago uh you know last month you know i have to i have to i have to put a show around it to make this one sound good interesting to get you a holler uh, to play the demagogue with you, you know, just pulling your emotions. You know, I got a hoop and holler. But I think if, you know, you gave a much more deeper uh, message, uh, I could softly, I could talk to you and you'll get it. You know, I have your attention the, the whole time. You know, man, that's deep. I've never heard that. Like, all right, so now I understand that it's in me and not outside of, but. Uh, I mean, that's another subject for another day, too. <laughs> I do want to touch on one thing, Bogo. Um, so how is the Nigerian experience? Is it is it kind of very similar to what we kind of expressed earlier, or is it, okay, verbatim? Yeah, I think I think it is. Do they do a money dance? <laughs> <laughs> they come out with boxes and money and throw it at the back. You have to see his face right now. It's priceless. <laughs> You know, have you done a money dance? <laughs> Did you do the money dance? <laughs> Is you, there video? So I, was, I was at a wedding, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I'm, I'm good friends with the groom, and they were dancing, and I had some twenties. I was like, ah. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a story for another day. But yeah, I think, and that's why I said in the beginning of the show, coming from the standpoint of. Being in Nigerian churches, I mean, the the quote-unquote issues, in my opinion, are still the same. So, I don't know whether it is in black churches, but I'll put out this scenario and allow you guys to answer. So, the, one of the problems I see in Nigerian churches is there's sort of a gap, a huge gap in the age demographic. So, you have a lot of children, a lot of children. And I was in um, at my uncle's church this past weekend, and the children, they had the children perform a bunch of songs. They had a seven-year-old preach. It was actually... Wow. What yeah. was he talking about? A seven-year-old it was actually like, fire. He, <laughs> no, <laughs> like low-key. <laughs> no, it was incredible. She talked about purpose. Nice. What does a seven-year-old know about purpose? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He haven't lived long enough. <laughs> wow. Right, yeah. I mean, I didn't know anything about purpose, so I was like 21. And <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. That's, a, out that's crazy. Babes. Yeah, it was... It's incredible, but they have a lot of children, and there are a lot of older folks, but people my age, there's not a lot of that. 
Correct. There's a huge gap. Yeah, I, I will second that one. I mean, mm-hmm. most of the yeah. black churches I've been to, it's it's usually old people and kids, and mainly it's, because yeah. the kids are forced to be there. Eight teenagers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. And I think that points to another problem, because even when I was growing up, my parents had said, let's go to church on Sunday. But no one ever told me why. Right? Oh, no right. one ever tells you, why is it good for me to go to church? Why is it good for me to follow God's commandments? It just said, you have to do this. You have to do this. You have That's to do it. this. But do you guys it, think questioning really is encouraged? No, no, that, that was the, not at all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not at all. It really depends on who, like, who's your parents at that point. Because mm-hmm. I remember being a kid and I asked a lot of questions, and they just were just kind of just like, oh, and you know, to their credit, some of these people they don't they don't, they don't have know. education. Like they they don't, they don't they don't know how to deal with questions because they haven't really had just huge questions like that. Like they like some of the older pastors that you know are dying off like now, they, they didn't even graduate high school. You know, down down here in the south, they just did it. Like they're just like, Well, I'm gonna go start doing this. I'm fifteen. I in most go. cases their <laughs> parents might have Did, exactly preached exactly. Whatever, you know. yeah. Yeah. exactly there's these like dynasty churches where like the dad was a pastor and his son's the pastor uh-huh. and then his cousin you know takes over because his son's not old enough but you know, you know. <laughs> but you know how it is it's just kind of just almost just like it, it becomes less about like who's actually being called to preach and uh, more who's been trained to preach who's being trained have you ever seen how they train fleas no, have you seen no, I'm not. You tell. Dude, so they take fleas, right? Put it in a glass jar. And, you know, normally fleas would jump 100 times mm-hmm. their height or whatever it is, right? They put the fleas in a, in a glass jar and they put the lid on top of it. So the fleas, you know, do what they do. They jump. <clears throat> and they hit the head at the top. Ooh. Right? Yeah. And because they're smart, they adjust their height, their jump height. Right, so let me jump only so high so I won't hit my head the next go around. Right, well once they get it right, and then so they left them in there for three days and they took the lid off. The fleas never jumped higher than that level placed by that lid. And the crazy thing about it is the kids, the offspring of the fleas, never jumped higher than their predecessors, than their parents. That's interesting. It's crazy. So, so basically, based off of that logic, what you're basically saying is folks who were forced to go to church and, and didn't really answer those questions basically repeated that same, same thing. type of Never mentality. And so, and then, so, because so some people think that asking questions is disrespectful. Yes. Yeah. To question is to essentially question God. You don't question God. God. Exactly. And so, it's, a, it's another story. Yeah. It's a, about a. Little boy walked in the kitchen, saw his mom cutting the fat off the bacon. Have y'all heard of that one? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Story he saw his mom. Bring the stories, man. Like, just let him talk. So, <laughs> so he's cutting the, he sees his mom cutting the fat off of the bacon before she put it in the pan. So the little boy's like, Mom, why do you cut the fat off the bacon before you put it in the pan? The mom's like, I don't know. My mom did it. So he wouldn't ask his grandmother, right? She said the same thing. I don't know. My mom did it. Luckily, the great grandmother was still living, and she was like, "Well, I trimmed the fat off the bacon before I put it in the pan because the pan was small. I had yeah. to cut it off so I can fit more pieces in there." Mm. But the mom or the grandmother never asked. Mm-hmm. So it's going back like we don't we don't know why like it's not that information that knowledge is not handed down to us, you know? Yeah. So. Do you think that's contributing to, I guess, the disappearance of young adults in churches? I mean, it. I oh, think man. a lot of people are waking up, man. Oh, yeah. They out there thotting. Let's yeah. just be real. Social, social <laughs> media. <laughs> that is true. I can't <laughs> thought in the church. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't be free in the church. No. That, 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 well, that's very true. I think they could thought Saturday night and go to church Sunday. <laughs> hey, Still do. lit from the night before. Man. <laughs> I, I, do, I go out Saturday night to go to church Sunday. Of Wait, course. you know, some still thought in the church, though. It's still yeah. Happening. yeah. I, you it's know, not I have a, Oh. What about that? <laughs> you thought and this is a thought story now? Eddie Long. Jeez, the, go, come on now. It's, it's not, <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's not for me. Son. <laughs> Someone. Nah, I'm not going to. This is it's too. It's so bad. You've already come started. On, <laughs> you listen to talk. Uh, listen to talk. Like this couch right, right now. This is Medulla talk. Spill it. So, <laughs> someone told me that 
he lost his virginity in church. At church. On the last pew to church. (laughs) At church. (laughs) During the preacher's sermon, when he was preaching about. Wow. Well, that's sexual very bold. That's a that's, that's a, very bold. yeah. That's how serendipitous. I, <laughs> like, that's a very well never time. Forget, they will never forget that. No, that's a sermon that you won't forget. That's, that's, that's messed cute. up, man. He's talking about, about it. Yeah, I thought that oh, was meant to be. <laughs> Let's take a second to talk about the back pew. All right, the back pew is the troublemaker. Pew. <laughs> All right, let's, let's 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 just say that like I just don't know what it is. Like my parents would hate it when I sit back there because it's like you're almost guaranteed to just kind of like be doing just stuff yeah. back there, like whether switching seats or constantly moving around, constantly talking, constantly doing this, checking your phone, doing this, that, and the third. But like yeah, like it's 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 like I think that's in every church where like the last seat is the bad seat. Yeah, <laughs> I did want to kind of touch on one thing. So um, I know with, with with the mosques in, in Islam, we have a lot of different activities outside of the sermons, mm-hmm. and so especially like a youth groups. There's uh, uh, social mingles where you can meet other ma- uh, singles and, and kind of talk, and in a way that's almost used as like a marriage uh, circuit, yeah. right? In a way, because um, there's really no dating in Islam. Um, is, is there anything like that in the Christian world as far as like outside activities beyond the church that young people are actually participating in? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I've heard of, I've heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> Steven, but your I think face? should I think it should extend past just the members though. Yeah. You know, go into those communities and, and reach out to those to the community as well. You know, not just the people that just pay you tithes. It's you gotta be careful with that one because oftentimes some of these churches are in less than safe areas. And I'm not gonna sit here and try to pretend that when you that we do not have a a sickness in the black community, that when someone tries to help you, you try to take advantage of them, bleed them dry, even. And that's what some churches are like worried about sometimes that you ever heard some of these churches they'll have like uh they'll have homeless people come and like you know sit outside the church asking for money because who's who's likely to give them money like you know church people stuff like that especially yeah. coming out of a sunday sermon <laughs> so you know it's, it's good uh good location 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 but um when when it comes down to like i just remember like uh, being the church I, I was, like I had always asked that question, why? And you know, we would try to do our best and stuff like that. But you would invite some of these people in, and they would come in. Some kids might steal something. They might, you know, cause a lot of like disruptions and stuff like that because they just had never been in an environment of boundaries or anything like that, or where they had to actually listen or sit and understand. And I, I wonder sometimes, at what point do you? Do you do you, yes, you reach out and you try to help. But if you get bitten too many times, can we really be mad if you're apprehensive about reaching out and helping? That's a good point. Especially because when you think about the different missionary missions available, and there's a lot of programs that will take folks and take them overseas. Yeah. And I always wondered if they're putting that same amount of attention to those types of areas. But the points you just mentioned, yeah, you could see why they would be a little reprehensive about that I, I i get that but i think don't solicit you know i, I hate when people come to my door and want to sell stuff you know i might right. just buy it but like just don't that's come why people don't like jehovah witnesses yeah, so no, no offense to jehovah door. witnesses yeah. out there that's, 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 <laughs> much but, offense to jehovah witnesses <laughs> 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 But, you know, just advertise. Hey, yeah, we're having some. If y'all want to come by, you can come by. I yeah. agree. I you know 100% I mean? agree with that. 100% agree. Yeah. And if someone now, comes up and they're hungry, yeah, feed them. Give them. Give but them. do you think they're welcoming environments? Because I- I'll give an example. So Ooh. there yeah, was there's a, um, there's an organization <laughs> that I actually went to a couple of Bible studies with. It's, it's called Philly Connect. It's a, it's a young adult, um, primarily black group. And uh, it's interesting because... They have sermons in their Bible studies. They go over different verses, but it's an it's a free environment. So you know when when they're talking about sex, like they're actually talking about sex. Like it's, it's not a like a, yeah, they're not pity paddling around the situation. Uh, yes, they're like they're talking about, and they're they're bringing up really personal experiences. Like hey, 
you know, how do I have a sex free relationship when I got these urges and like does a blowjob count? Like, Shoot, it, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get them. Pray about it. <laughs> Pray about it. <laughs> Do you, do you, but do you think like the actual church establishments and, and church events, are they a free enough environment for folks to actually have real conversations in? I think some churches are getting that way. I've, yeah, I've I agree. Yeah, some are, you know, some have got a long way to go. But yes, <laughs> yeah. you're right. So some are definitely opening up the doors to that. You just have to have the right person to like have that conversation because you know if you if you're you know eighty years old and you know <laughs> you, you, you talk like, to a teenager about <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what they're doing you just you know you can assume what they're doing but uh, you know some of the stuff that they're out there running into you're probably like blushing over low key because you're just like oh my gosh you're like. 12. I got married when I was 13, but, you know. <laughs> but yeah, like it's, I, I think that it, it takes the right person and resources. Like, do, do, do those churches even have? And I'm, I'm talking a lot about like rural churches because I see this like, I see this like thought process in a lot of them is that like they don't have the people who have the kind of like life experience. Like, they 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 either have people that grew up before like 1960 1970 and and then that's it like no one who's like been a teenager or or a child in the last like 20 years 20 30 years and if you don't have people like that the older we get the farther we get away from an age the more and more we forget what it's like to be at that age true yeah yeah that's true that's true and it begins to eat away at our ability to kind of like just show compassion exactly, and exactly be one on one with that person. Yeah. Well, yeah, we do have to go to break, but when we come back, we're actually going to talk about some really deep issues with tithes. So wah, stay tuned. Wah, you're listening wah. to Medulla. <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned, y'all. You're listening to Medulla Talk. Afro Vibes finally did it. They finally gave regular dudes a show to talk about whatever it is that we have on our minds. And so whether that be relationships or social norms, social issues, experimentations of just our society, myself, along with my friends, are here to talk about those subjects. So feel free to join me, Devonta Hill, on this crazy journey that we call Medulla Talk. Tune in to Afro Vibes Radio Houston for our episodes and follow us on all the social media sites. You know what they are. And we look forward to having you join our conversation. Welcome back to Medilla Talk, y'all. We were talking to some really deep uh, conversations, but I do want to give a shout out to Trent. Trent, shout out to him. Um, this would not be possible without him. Yeah. So, <laughs> Trent. Trent the engineer, y'all. Look him up. <laughs> What's your Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> but I really want to get into tithing because this is kind of, there's a, there's a lot of stuff to kind of uh, un- uncover with this subject. So the first thing is, is that money being used effectively? We should ask what's I don't the, think so. What's the effective use of it? Like, what's it for? Like, what's the purpose? Like, why do people tithe? Like, yeah, we let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's dig into that. Let's dig into that. So, I, man, that's only three places in the Bible where it talks about tithing. When Abraham came across Melchizedek, he immediately jumped off uh, his horse, donkey, whatever he was on, and mm-hmm. gave him a tenth of what he had. Then I think it was, what, the Pharisees and the Israelites. But there's no place in the Bible where it actually says that you have to pay tithes. God didn't say it. Jesus didn't say it. How the Bible was written. There's no place in the Bible. And you can thumb through it back I got to be honest with no you on that one. I got to be honest with you on that one. Um, in the Quran, uh-huh. there is no defined amount when it comes to zakat. Zakat is basically the equivalent of tithes in mm-hmm. a way. Um, zakat can also come in different forms. So it's not only just monetary, but it's right. also service. Exactly. So you can volunteer for zakat. You know, right. you can be a poor person and still give zakat. Uh, do people view tithes in that type of way? Nope. It's a it's a big question. It's a it's a big question. Like, I want to say that some place it gives some sort of of answer to ten percent, but I'd have to look that up. Like, I am not going to sit here and try to claim like I can quote that off the top of my head so that's going to be further reading for me nice <laughs> so <laughs> same, fully same. fully 100 percent i agree with that one now in in the in the case that if there isn't a place where 10 percent is the is said there then then there really is only a standard of what are are you giving something like are if you're there 
are you giving something? Are you, are you whether by work, whether by whether or by deed, whether by time, whether by energy, are you furthering God's kingdom? Because the whole because the whole purpose of even giving tithes or even doing anything with the church is because that you believe that in 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 your simple way, in your small way. You are taking something that God has given you, whether it's your talents, your your height, your speed, something that's you know whatever whatever you use to gain money, and then you've and you're supposed to, and you're giving a portion of it back, or the quote unquote the best of it, the first of it, much mm-hmm. like uh, Cain and uh, mostly like Cain and Abel were were ordered to, and and then and from then the church is supposed to blossom because we're all putting into it for those who cannot put in for themselves and who actually do need the help. And it's not necessarily this stigma of here I gave Johnny blah 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 like five bucks the other day. So or this, this, that, and the third, or 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 I I subsidized him this, this, that, and the third. So so he can meet with a therapist or something like that. Like it's supposed to it's supposed to have like a general anonymity to it. It's supposed to be the pooling of resources mm-hmm. to affect change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Problem comes whenever that purpose is not immediately like evident. There's not a goal. There's not a, a direction. There's not there's not a purpose to what like necessarily what they're doing. It's like almost as if they're like hoarding money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, and churches are supposed to be transparent. Like like I remember growing up in the church. That was a huge deal. Like you wrote down who gave, when they gave, mm-hmm. how much they gave, mm-hmm. and then. And the purpose wasn't, oh, this person gave a million dollars, yada, 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 and let's praise him. The purpose was so that, like, later, like, no one could sit here and, and accuse the church of impropriety mm-hmm. because that, that, and that was just us trying to keep each other, like, accountable. Problem is that some churches aren't as open or they, people don't go to the treasury meetings. True. <laughs> it's like people don't go on, on Treasury Day yeah. or they like to talk about what's going on. They don't care. They don't do. They're just kind of just like you know. Oh well, you know, I gave money to the church. I did it for Jesus. I'm good to go. Blah blah blah. Now, do you think? Do you think the general Christian knows the purpose of tithing? Because to, you to your point, because to your point, yeah, because to your point, I mean, the whole purpose of tithing is you're you're giving a, p- a piece of yourself to others in a way, right? Which is the act of giving. But a lot of folks that I've talked to before doing this particular episode do it out of obligation, simply because that's what they're supposed to do. There Our is no should go to a storehouse. That's what it was talked. That's how it was used in the Bible. Go into a general storehouse. A general storehouse. Exactly. Okay. I see what you mean. You know, so if you need, hey, you come. This is what we have. Everybody has been given. And it's general, It's the understanding that when I give this, it's going into that storehouse to help whoever. Or if I fall in need, then I know I can go there because everybody else is given to that one pool. Nah, dog. That sounds like communism. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much like <laughs> right. I bet some you know, it's, like, it's too much like right. And I think, you know, when, when, when pastors are up, up there preaching to the congregation or when people are listening to the pastor, that's the end of tithing. When I give it, that's it. Boom. Oh, you'll be blessed for give for giving. Ooh. That's it. Oh, we haven't even It's not like I, right, you know you he'll give it back to you tenfold. Yeah, God will give it back to you. Thousandfold. You know. Yeah. Yeah. One church I attended uh, you know I one church I attended, man, just recently, uh, I won't say the name of it, but uh, the, <laughs> the <laughs> wife <laughs> put him in the hot seat. Hey, the wife transparency. of transparency. <laughs> transparency. <laughs> the wife of the pastor, man, and this is the second time I've heard it. Uh, she was like, yo, if you, uh, God said you give a tenth and then you'll, just, just how they, just how they. Plant that seed. The, the televangelists. Yes. It was priests. Plant just, that seed and that seed is going to grow if you keep giving. Them right, money. right, right, right. Mm-hmm. But how they, they, you, they the wordplay they use, man. Yeah, Kellyanne just, Conway just, it, man. Yeah, to just mind screw you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. And if, uh, this is, I'm just going to get up here and say this. Because majority of people don't read their own Bibles, man. You know how many it's Christians true. I asked how, when the last time you read your Bible? True. That that's a common practice with a lot of people, though. I mean, there's a lot true. of Muslims out there who have never opened the Quran. Yeah, there's a lot of Muslims out there who recite the Quran and don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think that's a common practice with just humans as a whole. Yeah. 
as us not really wanting to put in the work to truly know what what we're believing, I guess. Very true. I know enough, okay? Yeah. You know, I'm not <laughs> out my there shooting thing. people, so, you know, I'm good to go, right? I went Sunday. <laughs> that should be good enough. But do you, do you <laughs> think forceful giving is, you know, it, it, I guess for me, my, the issue with this is the intention, right? If, if the intention is not there, then what's, why are you doing it? No, you're right. I mean, I think there's a, a few places in the Bible which God wants us to give from the heart. Yes. Right. So if we don't feel like giving an offering, then we shouldn't give an offering because we'll just, he doesn't want us to come up there and just grumble. Oh my God. I'm but we should ask ourselves why we exactly. don't feel like giving an offering. Yeah. What would be the motivation? A lot of people don't trust the process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. And I think uh, you guys heard of the pros- you guys heard of the t- prosperity gospel? Wealth oh. and health preaching. Exactly. Like, yeah. And I think. Reverend Ike. <laughs> no, Reverend Ike. <laughs> I think, uh, Chris, what you said points, once again, it points to another problem in American Christianity, which you talk about these televangelists, you know, give a lot of money and then you'll be blessed. In fact, I went to one particular church, not going to say the name, but <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny. The pastor is up there. He's he's he, he's preaching about, you know, giving, giving so that you can be blessed. You know, people use a verse, give, and it shall come back to you. Good measure, person, I'll shake it together. Uh, in the book the of Mal- man, Robert God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the book of Malachi, says, try me and see what I'll do for you. You know, he's preaching that. And then what he does is that he took testimonies from people in the church who gave a lot of offering. And then, I'm not going to lie, some of these testimonies were absolutely incredible in terms of they were able to start their own business and make tens of thousands of dollars per per month in just a couple months it's and they he used that to his advantage demagogical approach <laughs> exactly. so here's the problem with that money. the problem with that is that person that individual probably had his mind right exactly exactly to where it's a placebo he can start at the end his of the day it's not yeah. the tide that you gave it's the the tide you gave in your mind yeah exactly and yeah. I feel like he's missing out those elements where the person decided to give you tide money instead of paying rent, and their whole world f- falls apart. Exactly. We're missing that part of it. <laughs> because I didn't played you every year you've been coming here on, if you don't give, then this is what I have to you. You believe that. Don't get me started on people not paying their bills mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, giving ties. Oh, yeah, that's, not, that's, not the, that. that's not the purpose of it. Because, you know, by the end of the day, you're going to end up coming back to the church. That's asking good. for yeah, asking for 125 <laughs> I just gave you all because... Uh, Lights got cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get that back? <laughs> I feel it. No, but it, it's it's supposed to be a part of of a larger financial like game plan. Like you're not supposed to spend ninety like ninety nine percent of your money and then go to the next paycheck trying to find that ten percent to come back. Or or it's it's if you can afford. If that's not the thing. Like the big part of this is if you can afford like pleasantries. Like if you can afford to go out, buy a couple of drinks, you can pay your tithes. And I'm speaking to myself on this one. Yeah, that is if, true. If you can if you it's can priorities. afford to go to like movies and stuff like that, you can you can try you can try to pay your tithes. You can pay something. You can pay something. Something can, or you can or you can use your time for that, it's supposed to be a sacrifice. A sacrifice for others. You're not sacrificing for the church. You're sacrificing for those who the church will reach to be the hands and feet of Christ. However, more to your point, like Chris, and what you've been saying <laughs> is that people is that when personal enrichment gets in the way of doing what God has asked you to do or what, what what you're supposed to be called to do. Like even if, you know, this is all just mud, made up mumbo jumbo, Christianity, blah, 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 is fake or whatever. Even if it even if it all came down to be fake, the basic utility of person yielding service is to benefit another. And to benefit someone who otherwise would not would not be able to move forward, who who is struggling, who 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 cannot move on their own? Who cannot who cannot push? Who cannot reach that level ground on their own? So you know, if I we think were, that's the only purpose of life, man. Exactly, exactly. Like we we, and that's why that's why I love like the doctrine of Christianity. It's just like the we do not live for ourselves. We live to serve in some 
form some capacity Agreed. the person next to us. Agreed, and, yeah. and those who are created strong, those who are given a mind, those who are given abilities are supposed to use those abilities for those who are not given those abilities to make their world better. And I think a lot of people just forget that. Like just, I think that, a lot of pastors. Is, yeah, is that being taught though? Really, exactly. So that's what I. You know, this is this is my biggest thing with Christians. Yeah. Is that, or how Christianity is taught? Is that they put it outside of you. And most churches, how it's taught, is put outside of you. Jesus is there. God is there. Then they anthropomorphize God and give him human like um, attributes and everything. Call him him, and he thinks like this. He thinks like me, and mm -hmm. he don't like ugly. And he, you know, and it puts you in the mindset that it's a man. And to say that it's a man, it you can't fathom in your mind that that man is inside of me. It doesn't make sense. Just off the wordplay itself just doesn't make sense. You can't consciously, like, you can't make that work in your mind. You can't understand There's that. There's cognitive in dissonance in there. Yes, cognitive, exactly. So I think that the better way to preach, teach Christianity is to put it right back in the people. Christ, Jesus, I don't think he meant for people to follow him in a sense of, hey, yo, I'm the one and only, and you're not it. I think what he taught a lot of people is that it's in you. The kingdom of God is within you. The I am that he talked about, I am the way, the truth, and the light, wasn't so much I am, like me and not you, but that I am that is you also is the way, the truth, and the light. And... That ties into what you were just saying, how look at the word Christ, right? Christ in Hebrew uh, meant Messiah. Mm -hmm. Messiah means liberator of people. Mm -hmm. In order to liberate people, you first have to liberate yourself. And I think that's why Jesus, to, to go back to his story, how it's told in the Bible, he went off at 13. Where did he go? We don't know. But where I think he went is went to to liberate himself. He went to learn from the Gnostics or Gnosticism, knowledge of self. And then he came back and began preaching and, and liberating people, uh, giving people sight, the blind man sight, taught the lame man how to walk again. You know, um, I think that's, that is how Christianity should be taught. Like, yo, it's in you at the end of the day. And that's that's something that I guess a lot of people are searching for that they're not getting from church. It's the self help books. Every self help book is so talking about thing. you have the power to change yourself. And once you and change all of yourself, that comes out the Bible. Yes. 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 And yes. And, and I think and I believe that that comes out of all religious texts. The Quran exactly. is like that. Yeah. Help. You know. You. Yep. God helps those who help themselves. Right. In order to help yourself, you got to figure out what's wrong with yourself, and then right. and then fix it, and then and then from there you're set up to help others. What, what you guys are echoing, but it seems like that message, which is the basis of these religions, is not it's being conveyed. Therefore, there's no wonder why you have people thinking and believing what they're believing and what they're. There's too much fluff around it. Well, one thing I will say is that I I think that. It's, there, there is an understanding in, in Christianity that they try to get across, and I think that it's done poorly, is, is, is the nature of the sinful man. The sinful man is sinful because they're not knowledgeable. Oh, the sinful man is <laughs> sinful because they're not knowledgeable. They, they, in, they, they don't, they know, oh, yeah, this is bad, blah, 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 blah. But they don't know that this is bad. Like, yeah, I mean, I could smoke. Some people smoke cigarettes for 50 years and never get uh, lung cancer. Some people smoke it for three years and get cancer. Some people don't smoke at all and get, <laughs> get lung cancer. But because uh, they don't know how things, their actions will actually affect them. And I think that there is a certain aspect of limitation that we need to understand ourselves. We look, we're supposed to be looking at the Ten Commandments and see, see through the glass darkly. Like, we are, the Ten Commandments, you know, supposed to be taught that, hey, this is, you cannot reach this on your own. Yes. And I, and I think, and I think, and that's why, that's why I do slightly disagree, but I do agree that a lot of, a lot of personal understanding and understand where your limitations are and and recognizing that and knowing what steps you need to be trying to move forward to mm -hmm. make yourself a better person. Mm -hmm. And 
And I think, a, but a lot, but the strength to do that, while there is an internal aspect of it, it 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 comes from where we get our spark of life. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's and in the Quran it, 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 talks about how humans are not self sufficient. Exactly. Need, like, I'm not saying yeah. that God didn't yeah, God didn't give us like the personal strength to overcome certain things. What I am saying is that the point where we reach our limit. That's what the whole that's what the whole Bible was supposed to be about. Is that the Israelites, they met their limit. They generational limit. When whenever whenever the old generation that saw a miracle died, the next generation who hadn't seen a miracle, they just go like, oh nah, 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 nah. I'm gonna do what I want. Mm -hmm. And I think that they are a macrocosm of 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 who we of who we are. Of who we are as 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 whether we're believers or just people in general, just trying to make it through life, we constantly turn away from what we believe and what we know, it, what we know intuitively to be right, because there isn't necessarily a uh, a just kind of like oh oh well there's well that'll happen or this will happen that because we just have a lack of knowledge and I think that's where our limitation lies is that. We, our knowledge bases ends off in different places, and that's why each different person has as different shortcomings that can be met and or strengthened and overcome by a relationship with an omnipotent creator. However, like I said, not everybody believes that, but that's that's kind of the thought process that I have about about human limitation and our relationship with omnipotency. And I think that part of it, it would kind of help cure some of Bogo's points earlier <clears throat> as far as bringing in those young adults. Because most of those young adults are in that, that circle yeah. where they're, they're trying to navigate, they're trying to figure things out, they have a bunch of questions. And unfortunately, how things are set up right now, those questions are not being answered yes. by mm -hmm. preachers, by imams, by you know, religious, religious leaders, the, yeah. people they're supposed to be able to look up to. Mm -hmm. Now, if they were able to tap into that, what we just talked about, you know, I believe there probably would be a, a huge spike because then he was like, all right, this is stuff I can actually use. Give me tools. Ah, yeah, I had to cut it short. But like I said earlier, you know, it was, there was so much into that conversation. I couldn't fit all of it into today's program. But if you want to listen to the rest of that conversation, just go to totemadula.com and you'll actually have all of the, uh, the extended coverage of our conversation. That conversation goes on for another like 30 or so minutes. So check that out if you want to go see that. As usual, follow us on Instagram, like us on our Facebook page. You know, uh, you can follow Afro Vibes Radio Houston. You can follow me personally, Devo Primo. As usual, send me an email. I do listen to, I do read all my emails, uh, but please send it to my direct uh, show page. If you send it to the general Afro Vibes Radio Houston page, I don't get those emails. So if you want to actually talk to me, send them directly to me or go to my website and, and send some messages that way as well. As usual, we'll see you guys next week. Take it easy. <laughs>